Everything from matching hairstyles to mirrored temperaments. Have you ever noticed <laughs> that some owners look and act a bit like their dogs? Well, Weekend Today viewers have shared their doggy doppelgangers. Here Let's we start go. with Emma. She sent in this photo of her and her pooch. Yeah, it's I mean, all the hair, about the hair, isn't it, really? The hairstyle looks pretty cool. Uh, Samantha here says, it's a maybe from her. Now, for this one, it might be a bit of a stretch. Sarah Bryce admitting she doesn't quite look like her dog, Fox, but had to share a ripper of a photo. And it does... It does look good. Yeah, together. yeah, absolutely. They don't necessarily look alike, <laughs> though. And that is the phenomenon that we are discussing this morning because it turns out there is actual science behind the phenomenon and we are joined by Dr Carl Krizunicki. Krizunitsky. I always say that wrong. I apologise, Dr Carl. Uh, but we'll the, call you Dr Carl. The correct Australian pronunciation is wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> call me Carl. Dr Carl, is it really true? Do we look like our dogs? Ish, kind of. So if you get photos of dogs and their owners, people can match them up. And then you can even get photos of just the eyes oh, of the dog and the eyes of the owner and they match up. And then especially with regard to hair, and this only applies to women, we don't know why. Women with long hair mm. choose dogs with long ears. Not long <laughs> hair, but long ears. And then women with short hair choose dogs with short ears. Really? And we, don't know, we don't know why. OK, so this recent study has found that it is possible to match some dogs and their owners just by... but just by their eyes. Yes, but so what is it about the, the eyes? We don't know. And it gets more complicated than that because it doesn't always work out. Uh, so, for example, think about uh, guide dogs. $50,000 to train. Mm -hmm. yeah. One third has to be returned because there's a mismatch between the personality of the dog and the person who needs that guide dog. Mm. So not, there's not always automatic matching between dogs and their owners as there isn't between people who hang out together. Now, as I understand it, it isn't just about looks, right, Dr Carl? Apparently people begin to exhibit the same personality traits as their dog, sure. or vice versa? Yeah, we, we think it's mostly you choose and then you evolve with time, but we're not sure. And so, for example, if you've got somebody who's really anxious, like they're thinking, oh, my God, I know the bus is coming and I can see the bus coming on the, on the app and there are people waiting here, but if they're anxious, they'll, the dog will become anxious. Mm. And if their the person is confident, then the dog is easily trained to do oh. tricks, like, you know, sit, for example. And if the owner is kind of angry a lot, they'll tend to have dogs that oh. bite people. Oh. OK. Yeah. My dog's not that. My dog's just hungry all the time. Is that a Labrador? Uh, no, he's a beagle. Yeah. A beagle cavalier. I think we do. There we go. See, oh. I mean... Uh, I can't see a lot of I can't split them. Is. Look at the identical. <laughs> do you want one? I mean, they're both, both got, very good looking. Both got whiskers. <laughs> OK, if, if it, is it something that continued to develop um, over time as well, Dr Carl? In some cases, yes, and in some cases, no. The psychological studies are a bit weak, but certainly you find that happening with humans. So with humans, we have a thing in our brains called mirror neurons. Yeah. So if I'm leaning in towards you looking anxious or intent, you'll tend to lean in towards me. And there's a lesser degree of that with the dogs. Okay. Um, and sometimes the dogs do it to the humans, but mainly it's the humans do it to the dogs. Okay. Is there, with, with that, you know, picking up each other's kind of mood... Yeah, I, I was scared of dogs when I was growing up oh. and my mum would say, don't act scared because they can sense it. it is, is that a thing, that you shouldn't act scared if you ask? That them? is a whole different... Uh, Phenomenon. I'm opening up Pandora's box, okay. I apologise, Dr Pan or, or box of uh, frogs, OK? <laughs> uh, somebody rang into one of my radio shows and they work and their spouse mm. works in scary situations, mm. cops and so forth. Yep. And they said, every now and then... I get this, this smell of fear and I can't wash it out of the shirts. I said, where is it? It's in the armpits. And they were telling me that they can't wash it out. And I said, have you tried spot cleaning? So there is some chemical that says, I'm really anxious right now because somebody could kill me or something bad could happen. And what, I haven't been able to find anything about it, so I might have to do some research myself, which I hate doing. I, have to, I prefer to plagiarise other people's work. Once you've done the research, we'll no. have you back in, Dr Carl. Have you got a dog? Uh, I've had a dog, and now I have dog. children instead. OK. <laughs> I think we've got a photo of Lizzie and her dog as well. There we go. Oh, yes. Yeah, Freddie. Yeah. I can see the resemblance. I can too. It's, it's definitely a thing. It's Lizzie. Freddie Both happy, both happy little things. And this is my daughter, oh. Frankie, and our dog, Pepper. Oh, hello, Pepper. They may not look alike physically, but they do have similar moods. They've got the oh. same vibe going oh, on. And I think at that sassy? point, they were both a bit sassy and a bit sulky okay. when, I, when I snapped that one. Well, Dr. Carl, thank you so much for sharing your sharing the science behind uh, <laughs> pooches and their owners. My pleasure. Thank you.